Hello, my beautiful nerds, and welcome back to The Legend of Dragoon, right here on Mistledyne Online. What's up? That's me. That's my channel. Thank you guys so much for clicking on yet another Legend of Dragoon video, the first video that takes place entirely on Disc 4. That's right, my friends. We are in the final chapter of the game, and we find ourselves in the Death Frontier, a giant desert, as we head towards the Wingly Town of Eulara. Now, this is a very, very big place. But in the last episode, uh, of course, there was some dramatic reveals. Uh, I like to call it the revelation episode, where so many things are revealed to Dart and company, including who Rose is, who Zeke is, the true identity of, of Emperor Diaz, and of course, you know, <laughs> the, the end of days for Lloyd, maybe? I don't know, man. That was crazy. Anyways, in, like I said, in this episode, we are going to progress through the Death Frontier, which is this di giant, giant desert maze area. And I'm going to try to do this as best as I can, but this is a this is a very complicated place. Now, one thing that you'll notice right away is that all of the enemies here in the Death Frontier are, uh, they are enemies that you actually have to encounter, like, touch. They're touch-based encounters, just like in Hell in a Prison or uh, the Phantom Ship or places like that. So I just wanted to point that out. We're actually going to go into this sand swirl whirlpool thing which is going to drop us down here into that cave that we saw in the previous episode and this will allow us to actually grab this item one of the things that we're going to be doing of course is getting every single item that we can get in the death frontier because i'm me and that's what we need to do and it's a nice area to actually do all of this uh backtracking and, and back and forth because you can actually avoid almost every single random encounter so uh, every time that you drop into this cave, obviously, we'll be put back at the entrance. Uh, luckily, we don't have to do that th that many times, but I thought I would just point that out. You'll notice that Dart, just like in any other touch-based area, has a red uh, arrow over his head saying that, like, oh, you're about to get into a counter, but it's really only if you touch the enemies, so keep that in mind. We're actually going to be running all the way south here to go into this as well. Now, again, this is a pretty big a pretty big puzzle, and I'll actually link a source of a map uh, for, or not really a, a puzzle, but more like a maze, right? Right there, we can grab a healing rain, so we got a moon serenade and a healing rain, and uh, that's it for this cave. We're done here. We don't have to come back. But I just wanted to point that out. Now, what we're going to do here is we're actually going to go back, and we're going to go to our right instead of our left. It doesn't really matter, but I thought I would point that out. And obviously, after I grab all of these treasure chests, I think we'll actually go get into some random encounters. Or maybe just for funsies, we'll get into some as I go and hunt all of these items. This doesn't really matter, right? Uh, and we can go over the random encounters that you can find here in the Death Frontier. Now, this really is an excellent, excellent place. We're going to go left here. Uh, it's an excellent place. And then we're actually going to go up to this screen here. It's an excellent, excellent place to do some experience uh, grinding and whatnot just because of of the fact that you can just sit in a spot and they'll keep triggering battles with you. Uh, and we'll get a healing breeze. I'm actually going to purposely get hit by that enemy there so we can talk about who this might be. All right, perfect. So there are only five enemies that you can find in this entire area. And right here, we'll actually see a spiky beetle, which is an earth elemental with an 8% chance of dropping an attack ball. has 480 health. But the big one here is the Sandworm. The Sandworm is actually pretty decent uh, for getting additions and stuff because it has 1,440 health, which is pretty wild. Also an Earth-based enemy with an 8% chance of dropping a Spirit Potion. So I just wanted to point that out. Uh, and then, of course, we'll actually kind of focus on the, uh, the Spiked Beetle first. But it is a really good opportunity to, to get those additions uh, ground, gr grinded. You'll also notice that my party now is Kongle and Albert, and that's just because I'm working on additions in SP, and obviously Miru is maxed out with her Dragoon thing, so while she still needs to, oops, while she still needs to worry about her, um, her additions, she just doesn't need the SP anymore, so the additions aren't super, super important. And there we go, that battle's done. Watch how much XP that you actually get from this, 308 for a very, very easy battle. Dart actually hit level 33, which is pretty cool. But yeah, while the XP numbers don't look crazy, uh, it is very decent because of the fact that you can just sit there and get hit over and over and you don't have to keep running around or, or anything like that. You can kind of just you can kind of just get smacked. So anyway, we're gonna go down here to the last little spot that we can do. Uh, and we'll run right to the left here for the last item that we can find in this area, anyways. 
of well, it's right here of the uh, of the Death Frontier, which is a healing fog, which I believe is all four chests that we can get in just the first half of the Death Frontier. There's actually even a bigger part uh, over this way, so you want to be careful not to run into these. They do kind of drag you down. If you do fall into that one in particular, it will actually bring you to a restoration point um, where you can heal for free. Which, again, is one of the reasons why the Death Frontier is just so good for leveling is because it does have that free spot. So I'm actually going to get into a battle with this as well, uh, just so we can I can actually show you uh, some additional boss fights. So, again, we got into... So we've seen the Sandworm and the Spiky Beetle. The Spiky Beetle. The Spiky Beetle. Uh, so far. But we also have these enemies right here, which uh, they... Jeez, they look like very angry, very angry uh, cactuses, which they are. Earth based, 320 health, and, of course, uh, they have a 15% chance of dropping a useless item, the Recovery Ball, which is just... It's just no point. And we can one-shot those with every single character. So that was not great for grinding additions. That's for darn sure. Uh, and, of course, they do drop a recovery ball. Even though I don't need it, and I'm going to get rid of it. Get that out of here. I don't want it. So I'm going to see. There was a, another enemy right here. Okay, good. So this is going to be, hopefully, the final encounter that will show everything that you can see here in the Death Frontier. Uh, let's hope, anyways just the dragonfly the cambria day fly if you will it is a wind-based elemental this has an eight percent chance of dropping a body purifier and is a wind-based enemy with 520 health uh so it's not gonna be that difficult to take out especially when kongol can do 809 damage are you kidding me dude who even are you now the dragonfly or dayfly or whatever that you see on those isn't really worth doing because for the most part they're going to be by themselves and they only give about a hundred uh experience so those are really lame anyways so i just showed you that uh that was the 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 first half of the death frontier and we got all the items that we can in this area um so i just wanted to point that out again you can feel free to 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 get some levels uh but there's a better spot coming up so we'll we'll head through this awesome looking map here look at that wasn't that beautiful that last shot this will actually lead us if we go right here which is the only real way we can go we will be taken to an oasis water hmm oh it's refreshing here no monster we can rest now What will the Wingleys and Eulora know? They should know the way we... Or at least I should take. So there's no need for you to come. Are you still saying that? Don't you understand it's no longer a problem for you alone? You just found it out a couple of days ago and now you think you can judge me? It is not as easy as pursuing one Wingley. Whoa! You... You say it was easy? Don't be so conceited! Stop it! It won't lead us anywhere. Rose, nobody can understand the weight of fate you have carried, but we can at least lighten the burden for you. That's why... we're going with you. If you have the strength to argue, then we can go on. There is no other way, is there? Hmm. Very cool. So we can actually use this water here to, yeah, you guessed it, instantly refill all of our health and everything. Now, I also want to show that below us is another cave here, uh, which, again, you know what that means, my friends. Get ready to frequently be taken back. Uh, see, you can, you see, see what I mean? don't trust <laughs> you're going to be seeing this cave a lot because obviously we're going to be bouncing around it and, and having to come back here all the time but you can see that there's a chest that we're going to have to get up there uh and there's a drop point right here uh this is a little bit more complicated of an area also looks like there's another chest that we have to drop into to get that right there and this one over here 
Uh, so I just want to I just want to keep in mind that you know trust you're gonna be landing here a lot like a real like a real lot <laughs> apologies you nerds if you want to get if you want to get every item in the game you got to do what you got to do you know what I'm saying anyways uh, we can head out of the cave here you can also save like I said uh, there's really no problem with with grinding or, or staying in here as long as you want you really can so if we head this way this will actually lead us to this map here. And if we go... Oh, wait. Nope. Is this the one that I want? I don't think so. I think I got myself a little a little mixed up there. We'll see. If I land on a chest... Okay, okay. So, I was just making sure. I got myself a little a little backwards there. So, if we don't want to use... We don't actually want to use that 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 uh, that entryway, that exit from the oasis at all. Um, the one that is right here. There's no point. Uh, so, I don't know why I got turned around, but I did. This is the one I was looking for. That's that's right. Right here, we can actually go... We're going to go up here. And then we're going to go immediately to our right. Of course, ignoring as many in, uh, encounters as we can. Now, there is another enemy that I will need to show you guys at one point. One that we're missing. And then we'll go down here. And there should be... Oh, no, 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 don't go down. Woo! Oh, that was close. I want to go to this final one right here. And there's actually going to be, as long as I can get away from the sand, a chest that we can grab, which is going to be a gladius. Very cool. And then we'll actually head into this sand whirlpool thing where we can grab yet another item. Very nice for us. Yes. Starts like, ow. Can't carry any more items. Well, that's fine because I can actually show you what the Gladius is. Uh, the spoiler: it's it's a weapon. It's a it's a weapon for for Rose. Uh, so we can go ahead and equip her, which instantly kills enemies with given probability, which is actually very nice. It only raises her attack by five, but still, I mean that's a really nice effect to have on a weapon, right? So uh, we'll we'll go ahead and equip her with that Gladius, and then I need to get rid of an item. All right, and then we can grab a recovery ball. Useless. Instantly get rid of that. Just delete it. Delete it forever. Anyways, like I said, like I said, my friends, we're gonna have to do a lot of backtracking here. Uh, don't, don't listen. Don't be mad at me, okay? Don't, <laughs> don't be mad at me. Uh, so we're gonna go up, and then uh, when we go up, we'll go into the left side screen here. Wa bam! Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. And then we're actually gonna run up two screens here to get another item. Uh, which will actually lead us to another item that we can get in the cave, which is which is actually very useful. Now, surprisingly, uh, this area, unless you get completely lost here, it's it's actually not that bad to traverse this place. And we get the most important item, my friends, that you can get here in this entire area. And that is the power down item, which, <laughs> oh, 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 you guessed it. Yeah, it does exactly. Yeah. Anyways, we got the power down. And then we'll go directly into this sand whirlpool here, which will drop us back into the cave. And we'll be able to get yet another item here, which is actually the one that you can... It looks like you can grab it uh, by going, like, into the cave and searching around, but you can't. And we can grab a Sun Rhapsody. Wow, that sure is useful! And now, I wanted to also show you real quick that Power Down says becomes weak for three turns. Now, the way that power down works is exactly like power up. Uh, so that means that it halves the physical and magical attack power and both defenses for the duration of three turns. So if you were to use this on a boss, for instance, and then you were to use power up on somebody else, not only is that boss now weakened to magic, but you are also stronger with magic. And yeah, you guessed it. We're going to see some really, really cool <laughs> some really cool uses of power down in this playthrough which is why it is so important that you grab it here while you're going through death frontier now death frontier of course isn't like a missable area it's not like it's not like if you don't get all the items now that you'll never be able to get them ever again uh but it is something that just that i wanted to point point in my uh point point in mind that doesn't make sense that's not the word i was trying to say anyways we're gonna head up north here and immediately we're gonna go to our right in this screen that we can. Now remember, we still have another random encounter that I can show you here in Death Frontier. We'll go up here. Up one more, my friends. And then immediately to our left. This will actually take us to an... Whoa! I got hit! Perfect! Hopefully... Hey! Hopefully we get the final enemy that we need. And it wasn't, so let's go left. 
And we need to keep moving here, so let's go. Oh, don't get hit by that. No, 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 no. Oh, my God. I suck at this game. But the good news is, see, guys, I did that on purpose because we get the scorpion enemy, which is also earth-based, has an 8% chance of dropping poison needle, which, hey, remember when I said you want to save those? Let's hope that you can get this thing to drop a poison needle because it's so good. But again, 280 health on an earth-based enemy. That means that this thing's going to die really, really, really quickly. Easy peasy. 8% chance on that poison needle. So I do I do recommend uh, you could grab some of those poison needles if you need them right now. Now, one of the things that I haven't really... I'm going to get into another... Oh, no, I was able to get away, but I thought I was going to get into another battle. One of the things that I should mention of one of the reasons why... Also, can we talk about how beautiful this oasis is? Oh, my gosh. Uh, one of the reasons why the leveling is so, so, so good here in the Death Frontier is because if you have three ultimate war gods at this point, which you could very well easily have, right? If you have three ultimate war gods, you can put those on all of your characters. You can just sit there hitting X every so often, right? And like just level your additions and level your characters without you really needing to do anything. And you can like put Netflix on and, and everything else. And I'd be lying if I said that that isn't one of the ways that I'm going to be leveling my characters to max. Uh, obviously, I'm not doing that right now because the game is already a little easy for us. Um, but I, I thought I would just, I thought I would point that out that that is one of the big strats uh, that you can do here, especially if you have a turbo controller, which obviously uh, I don't really use one for Legend of Dragon because it kind of breaks the game even more. And I don't like hardware that breaks the game, if that makes sense. I like breaking the game because of a strategy. You know what I'm saying? Anyways, we have uh, the final save point here in the uh, Death Frontier, but we're actually going to consider, uh, consider, we're actually going to keep going north here. And then we're immediately going to head to our left. And then north from here as well. And then we have two items left here in the Death Frontier. I got to be honest with you. This place, uh, I've been recording for about 20 minutes so far. Not a bad episode at all. So we immediately went to the right after going north. And we're going to go to the right one more time. And hopefully grab our last two items that we can get here. So up in this corner here, we can grab an item, which is a healing potion. Oh my god. And then we'll go down into here to grab our very last item in the entire area. Which, guys, are you ready for this one? Are you ready for what awaits us in this chest? I don't think you are. The Bandit Shoes. Finally. Finally, the one-of-a-kind Bandit Shoes. There you go, my friends. We finally, finally have a way of making Kongol just attack a little bit faster. So, uh, without, you know... Without having that. So again, a, another opportunity, right? Where it'd be really, really great to uh, to, to use those ultimate war gods here. Uh, and those those bandit shoes on Congo are going to be just, just beautiful. Bandit shoes, so, so great of an item to get. And that, my friends, is every single item that you can get here in the Death Frontier. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad it was that easy, man. Really am. I remember this area when I was younger. Uh, I guess if you don't have like a map or a way around, this place can be super annoying. Uh, but I showed you basically like, <laughs> well, you know, as usual, a perfect walkthrough. Uh, but it brings us all the way back to this oasis. So uh, keep that in mind. It's 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 the bandit shoes, though, you know? Now, keep in mind, my friends, that that is literally the only pair of bandit shoes in the entire game. There is nowhere that you can buy them. There are no enemies that can drop them. Drake does not drop them. He drops the bandit's ring. That is the only pair in the entire game Make sure you get it, because it is so good. Especially because Dart is just always in your party, right? And the bandit shoes can only be equipped by men. Anyways, to get out of the Death Frontier, we want to go north of the Oasis, and then we'll go uh, to our right. And then we'll immediately go north twice, actually. So we'll go just... Yeah, I'm trying to try to give you guys the best layout here. So we'll go, we'll go north there. Oh, don't go that way. Oh, God, I got stuck on a rock. Oh, good. Oh, wasn't paying attention. Wasn't counting. Anyways, and on this one, we'll go north again. This will lead us to the second oasis on the second part of the Death Frontier. And you can save. You can drink. You can do whatever you got to do. Uh, we're going to head north. We're almost out to the wingly city of Eulara, apparently. And then we will go left here. And then on this map, we will go north. See, I'm, I'm, lay I'm laying it out for you. I'm, I'm, I'm your I am your desert guide right? <laughs> this desert trek. Uh, and then we'll go right and then north one final time. 
my friends, to get out of the Death Frontier. Don't worry, though. We will be back, I promise you. Also, uh, there is no halberd to find in the, de the, 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 in the Death Frontier whatsoever. Uh, I have seen that as, like, a thing that people say, like, you can get. You cannot. It does not exist. It is not here. Uh, so I just wanted to point that out. Anyways, that is us out of the Death Frontier, my friends. Look at what awaits us. Even though the world map says we're on the Death Frontier, we're, we are not, and they are fibbers. And we're going to want to set up our party appropriately for this. So let's go ahead and actually replace Rose. We're going to replace... Uh, actually, you know what? Better are they at... Let's replace Miranda or uh, Albert with Miranda. And we're going to equip Miranda with the Virulent uh, Bow, which she already has, which has a chance of, the, uh, of putting poison on a target, which is exactly exactly what we need so let's hope that we get into an encounter with this make sure you have a poison needle before you do this or the virulent arrow and here we go perfect the, the lucky jar my friends is one of the lap are you kidding me and here we go the lucky jar unique monster one of two left in the entire game that we haven't seen yet this is the first time that we've seen it so right off the bat you have two choices to defeat this thing. You can either use a poison needle, in which case I uh, actually have two of them. Uh, spoiler, I went I went to Ulara first and then came back and I'm, I'm doing this now. But but I went to Ulara first. If you don't have any poison needles in your inventory, Ulara does sell them so you can proceed with the story and, and buy them there. But we're going to go ahead right off the bat with Dart and we're going to use a poison needle here on the Lucky Jar. This fight actually, actually stinks. Because like I said, you have two ways of destroying this thing. You can either poison it and hope that you get lucky and this thing eventually destroys itself because of the poison, or you can use a sachet and call it a day. So we need to wait for this thing to do two damage to itself after it's poisoned. So that's one. We'll wait. Uh, hopefully it does another point of damage to it. We'll go ahead and just guard here. After two points of damage, that's two. Perfect. Now we want to use the magic sig stone to prevent it. That's three. Okay, it's still, it's still rolling around and attacking us. All right, good. Perfect. All right, so it has three points of damage. I'm pretty sure this thing actually has six in total. So we'll go ahead. Yep. Uh, see, it's poisoned. We'll go ahead. You will use the magic sig stone on it. And that means that it should... I mean, that's it, right? We defeated the lucky jar. It's very important that you do it. That was four. Very important that you do it that way or else it will just run away. Uh, once the magic sig stone like if you throw a poison needle and then immediately follow up with the magic sig stone It'll just run away every single time. So you have to be careful. Remember. It's at four, right? that's five and Come on. Give me that six, baby Boom lucky jar defeated just like that my friends very very easy I say as that was my fourth encounter with one and we get 300 gold, 1,000 experience, and a moon serenade for that fight. Absolutely wild. Both Rose and Miranda level up. Rose is level 29, Miranda level 31, and we got that moon serenade. And as soon as you're ready, just head to the Spring Breath Town, Ulara. Ulara? Ulara? I'm going to call it Ulara. But it might be Ulara. Ulara. Wait. Is it destroyed? Even if an adventurer is lucky enough to make it through the Death Frontier, nobody can proceed from here. Wait, what? Time was stopped for me 11,000 years ago with the spell of this choker. Oh! And this is the only way to see Ulara, the Spring Breath Town. Hmm. But where is it? The only thing here is an endless desert. No, it's not, Hatchel. I sense it. I sense people's feelings. Over there! Remember way back in Fletz when Rose was talking about her choker? Well, that this would be... Oh my god, look at it! It's so cool! We can fly over there with this. Are you afraid? I think you are. Maybe. We're standing by you. I know. 
Let's go. This must be so awkward for them. Anyways, there's a nice little chest sitting. Oh, come on. We're going to go ahead and just and just and just delete this Sun Rhapsody here. I don't even want it. And you know why I don't want it? Because we can get a free one for free right here. <laughs> there we go. All right. Let's go ahead and use this to head to the Spring Breath Town Ulara. Look at this place, my friends. Welcome to Ulara, the Spring Breath Town. I am the guard of the teleporting device, Karen. I'm a good friend of Rose's. Long time no see. Long time? Rose, you are starting to regain a sense of time, aren't you? No, not only that, you have recovered a lot of other things, too. Are you the person who stopped time for Rose? No, it was Char Char Charles Frama. She's the person we have to meet now. Charles Frama. Rose has been carrying the fate of the world all alone while shedding tears of blood. Can you go with Rose? Karen, stop it. I don't need to force them. I have already settled things with the Black Monster. The only thing left is that I have to complete this journey with my companions. If you understand that, I have nothing to say. I settled things with the Black Monster? Dart, you're a good dude, man. So, I'm not gonna lie. I've always thought that... That Charles was how you said that. It's... It is Charlie. Which... Which I did not... I... I've... For the longest time, I have always thought that her name was... Was... Was Charles. Char, Char, Charles, uh, Frama, but it's Charlie Frama, which like just sounds so weird, right? Go see Charlie first. Until you do, I will close the way to going forward. Uh oh, so I can't use this thing here? That thing looks awesome. Fine, whatever. Well, let's go ahead and head this way. We can only go to one way, and that is to go see Charlie. I'm guessing her brother is Melbu, but like, also. Why is your name Charlie and her name's and her name's or her name's Charlie and your name's Mel? That's so weird. It's been a while since the last time I saw a human other than Rose. It's been eleven thousand and uh, some years. So these these Winglies are are like they've had time stopped for them as well. The Winglies in the Wingly for uh, the Wingly Forest haven't. The water flowing down there is created by magic. Magic does bring happiness to the world unless you use it in the wrong way. Wow, very interesting. So, we actually want to head this way. I just wanted to talk to that guy since he was on the same screen as us. And we want to head all the way here so we can go talk to Charlie. Mayata, where is Charlie? You are wondering because she would normally be taking care of these babies, right? Charlie is preparing herself because, well, the things we didn't tell you about, right? Zeg told you them, so... It must be about the Moon Signet. Tell me what you know. The Signet is the... Signet Sphere. The Signet Sphere is a sealing device that was created to be the last barrier, just in case the Moon Child reached the moon that never sets. Even my mistake was in your plan. You are really scary people. Even more scary is Zeg. He's trying to destroy the Signet Sphere, using the Divine Moon Objects. W wait a minute. Uh, you made the Signet Sphere just because you were afraid of the birth of the God of Destruction. And why then did you make tools that can destroy the Signet? Asked Charlie. It was decided between the siblings. I will. Oh yeah. The siblings, you say, huh? Very interesting. What about you, buddy? You guys were meant to come to the city. Humans, Gigantos, and one of us, a Wingly. I would like to tell you something. It wasn't only Winglies that wanted the Dragon Campaign. However, it is true that Winglies and humans drove themselves to war. If you have time, let me tell you a story about the two Winglies who were the leaders. Yeah, dude, tell me right now. The first... Is Melbu Frama. 
He was the leader of the Winglies during the Dragon Campaign. He was also the younger brother of Charlie. Being the leader of the Winglies meant being the ruler of the world. He professed that only Winglies had the right to live, and he ruled over other species physically and mentally. As a result, the grievances of the other species accumulated and the Dragon Campaign began. The war ended when the royal capital Cadessa was annihilated, and at the same time, Malbuframa was killed by the sword of the Dragoon Zeke. The other man who led the Winglies was Faust. As the right-hand man of Malbuframa, he was feared by other Winglies. He also was known as a wizard and a magician. His magic power was incredibly enormous. He could even create his own apparition, his double. The apparition had most of the capabilities of Faust himself. However, Melbu felt uneasy over the existence of the apparition, so he created something. What Faust did was like professing an intention towards disloyalty. It is natural that he didn't like it. It was called the Vanishing Stone. With that item, it is said that you can make the apparition disappear, although I don't know if it's true or not. Let's get back to the story. Anyways, Faust was the commander of the super mobile fort Flanvel as well. Now, Flanvel is at the bottom of a glacier, however, it used to be floating in the sky in order to protect the five main cities that also floated in the sky. Faust manipulated Flanvel and killed any other species. However, the insanity of Faust ended with the collapse of Flanvel. It was shot down by a weapon invented by humans, the Spear Shooter. His beloved vehicle became his tomb. He should be satisfied with that. That is the end of my story. If you want to listen to it again, come back anytime. I'm more than willing to tell you. So the guy that we saw, Magician Faust, that was just an apparition. Which is why he was so difficult and we couldn't actually hit him because he was a monster. Anyways, we need to go talk to Charlie now. Things are getting serious. Oh, guys, can we just can we just talk about how beautiful this is easily, I think. Diningrad's beautiful, but this is like, oh man, I would live here in a second. It reminds me of like Riven 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 Rivendale from um Lord of the Rings. Oh Rosie, darling. I've been waiting for you. <laughs> I don't need your greetings. You know what I want to ask you. Ooh, you are so scary. But before that, can you introduce me to the son of dear Ziggy? This is dark. Hmm. Doesn't he look just like our Ziggy? But Rosie, honey, it's complicated. You have to fight with the son of someone who used to be your significant other. And furthermore, the enemy is the significant other. Do you want me to give you a knuckle sandwich? Sorry, honey. But I'm really concerned. So I'm intentionally making it happy and delightful so that you won't be depressed, Rosie, sweetheart. You have never changed. Charlie, if you know, please tell us. Uh, where should we head to? Really? You have the same eyes as Ziggy. I know. I have been waiting for you in order to tell you everything. Now, what would you like me to tell you? Uh, Sigmund Sphere sounds like a good start. Ziggy is trying to break the signet of the moon that never sets with the magic power of the divine moon objects. That signet is the signet sphere. I'm sorry that I didn't tell you about this. I have to apologize. I miss the moon child, Shauna. Mm -mm. But you still have time. The signet of the moon that never sets is not broken yet. Where are the remaining signets? Mm, in the past, they were placed in five cities, but there are only three left. That's why they needed the same number of divine moon objects. Mm -hmm. What happened to the other two? One was destroyed in the royal capital, Cadessa, during the dragon campaign and the other was lost when the Divine Dragon assaulted the Crystal Palace. Does this mean without the Divine Moon objects, the Signet Sphere can be destroyed? 
The Divine Moon objects are just tools that conceal vast amounts of power, magic power. That's it. So in order to destroy the Signet Sphere, having the same amount of magic power as the Divine Moon objects is sufficient. My, my dad knew about this and made Lloyd collect them. Doesn't seem like him, and it's so indirect. Plus, something is strange. I wonder how Zigi knows about the Signet Sphere. Not only that, he knew that Shauna's the moon child. Okay, well, what about the moon that never sets? That's something we should learn about. It's the 108th fruit that the Divine Tree dropped. It was conceived with the God of Destruction that ends the world. That's why we separated it into its soul and flesh and sealed them away. My baby brother Melbu sealed the soul, which was the source of magic power in the Crystal Sphere, but, um... Well, when he fought with Zigi, it was broken. Then, the soul escaped from the Crystal Sphere and started to transmigrate into a human body. Since then, it has been called the Moon Child. What is left in the sky is the moon that never sets. When the Moon Child goes back to the moon that never sets, the Viraj embryo, the God of Destruction, will be born. So, we needed our Rosie to take on an important task. Please, understand her. Okay, well, what about my father, the evil guy Zeke, that's destroying everything? You are concerned, aren't you? Why does he have to destroy the world? Sorry, but that is the one thing that I just don't understand. But he was unmistakably Zeke. Zeke was the fiancé of Rosie. They crossed both swords and love. Just looking at them made me feel embarrassed. Stop right there. I want to talk alone with Zeke about our memories. I agree. Why make items to break the... Why? Yeah, why? Why? That doesn't even... Why do that? That's right. If you were not planning to allow the Virage embryo to be born, you wouldn't need them. I didn't want to, but my baby brother Melbu insisted. Hmm. That's not an explanation, Charlie. Oh, you are so uptight. But, okay, I'll explain it to you. I told you that we sealed the soul of the Viraj embryo in the Crystal Sphere, right? It is in order to draw lots of magical power and rule over other creatures. I wanted to make him stop being a dictator. Because even though we have different appearances or capabilities, we are the same. We should be able to live together on good terms. That's why I created the Signet Sphere, in order to weaken the magic power of the Crystal Sphere. Rose, without telling you that, the, the five signets that protect the moon that never sets restrain the magic power that flows from there. My operation was a big success, I thought. But Melbu found out about it and created the divine moon objects. I guess he was prepared so that he could destroy the signets anytime he wanted to. Hmm. I get it. So, where are the rest of the signets? That's a, that's a good question. That's right. That is the most important information for you, isn't it? Because Zigi has the Divine Moon objects and he can break the Signets any time... Listen carefully. The rest of the three Signet Spheres are located in the ancient cities. The names of the cities are the Magical City, Ageless, Law City, Zinabatos, and Death City, Mayfield. Those cities are still alive. Hmm, it's surprising, isn't it? Of course, they were badly damaged during the war. How do we get there? Go to Rouge. Then your way will be open. You said Rouge. Uh, it's my hometown. Mm -hmm. See? And it's already open, isn't it? Well, it'll be night soon. Why don't you go look around until tomorrow morning? Wow. That is some interesting stuff. I feel like we're learning so gosh darn much about this entire game now, my friends. Uh, we can talk to Rose. Don't worry about me. Go take a walk in New Lara at night. Okay. Oh, dart, sweetie pie. Everybody's outside. Uh, okay. Now, there are actually three different, uh, there are three stardust that we can get in this area. And I just wanted to point that out. Uh, but we're not going to grab those just yet. We've gotten almost all of the items that we can get. 
Uh, we're actually going to head up here real fast because there's another item that we can grab, which of course I can't carry. And that is a moon serenade that we can pick up, which of course those are pretty useful. So I, I, I like holding on to moon serenades. They restore MP for literally everybody in the party. So definitely better than a sun rhapsody, right? Just like a healing rain is better than a healing fog, if you will. Anyways, uh, we want to head towards uh, the save point and shop areas. We're kind of going to skip a lot of things, but uh, I wanted to look at these first. Now our way is opened. Shana, I'll be there soon. Rose. Hmm. You really forgive? Don't say anything. It's... It's already in the past. Take your sword. You have become strong. You can take care of yourself. Kill me. Why? The black monster is dead now. We only have... a companion who's on the same road. I miss the time when you were chased by Fairbrand in the forest. Yeah, me too. And I didn't know anything back then. The world is so frail. The world is created so that it can perish at any time. The creator Soa can recreate one any time. But the people living there can accept it, believing it is fate or struggle against it. I struggled in order to protect this world that was taken back by friends who gave up their lives. I told you. You are no longer alone, Rose. Start. Let's go see everybody. This is just the beginning. It really, really isn't, though, Dart. It really, really is not. So why don't we go ahead over to where the save point is in this area... Uh, because, I, my friends, we are we are winding down on this episode. So we'll come back this way. We'll actually head up here uh, towards... There's actually where the shops are here in Ulara, which is a, a really cool thing because there is something that we could potentially need to get. Uh, but we'll go ahead and save. Thank you guys so much for watching this episode of The Legend of Dragoon. I hope I was able to show you some easy ways of getting around the Death Frontier area. I know it can be a little confusing. Uh, but hopefully I, I showed you a thing or two. And also we got some really good items and, and whatnot. So I appreciate it. Uh, in the next episode, it sounds like we're going to be heading back to Rouge. However the heck we're going to get there. Who knows? I'm very, very excited. So thank you guys so much for watching. Huge shout out to all of you watching in the premieres every Monday, Wednesday, Friday at 2 p.m. Eastern. Sincerely appreciate you guys. And I can't wait to show you the rest of this game because gosh darn it. It is just a magical, magical game. Thank you for watching, and remember, never give up, never surrender to the, the black monster who is also Rose.